Hi everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Avery Forest. Uh, today, this week, um, it's been my turn to host the park and, and build something. Um, I'm here again with Michael. How you doing, Michael? How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. How's your week been? Oh, it's been good. It's been good. I've been excited to see what you were able to get done. Um, I know you showed me some pictures, but it really looks amazing. Uh, you. Oh, well, I'll explain a little bit more about what I have done. Um, as you can see, I have built the sort of second entrance building um, along with a, a, a small sort of plaza. Uh, as you come over the bridge, um, you sort of walk into this open space where at the moment we've only got a sort of medical centre on the left. Uh, we've got some toilets on the right. But the first thing I want to talk about is this uh, this wall at the front that I've put here, um, because I think it really sort of separates it from the other side, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and, I mean, I've seen this sort of technique used quite a lot, um, even in real parks. Obviously, you see this type of wall with a fence going around the edge, especially when there's lakes and stuff in parks. And I don't, know, I don't think it turned out well. I, I, it looks quite nice and obviously the pillars that you see in between the fences have got uh, some light in uh, so obviously in a bit we'll change it to dark and, and um, you can have a look to see what it looks like at night um, but in regards to this entrance building um, I've obviously taken a bit of inspiration uh, from your building um, mm -hmm. I, I loved what you've done in terms of the textures and, and how you've separated the colours and stuff from the building so I've kept it to the same theme and the same colours and um, it's, it's obviously not exactly the same style building um, I, I do believe yours is a lot better but um, I don't know about that. I've tried this to is... keep it <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to keep it to a similar sort of uh, build and obviously I've kept that sort of curve with the building I've tried to keep it curved round mm -hmm. uh, to sort of like a semicircle um, just because I didn't want this area to be too open and too sort of big. Yeah. Um, as I say, there ain't going to be much here apart from obviously the toilets and the medical centre, uh, as this is just sort of a walkthrough area when you cross the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, in that central building uh, at the top of it, obviously you can see I put a little clock tower up there. Um, I wasn't really sure what to do with the roof up there because obviously the way the way that I've done that building um, it left a sort of open square in the middle and I didn't want to just put a simple flat roof on there and have it flat um, so I thought I'd put a piece on the top make a little clock tower out of it I think it turned out quite well yeah I think it and, um, turned out really well too um, and so I'm going back over on the video now just kind of showing um, how it looks when you're walking from the very front of the bridge. But yeah, that's one thing I noticed right away when you're sending photos is how great that clock tower looks. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think what you did is perfect because you're, like you said, you're kind of rounding it off. And the whole point of this park, when you had the idea of trying to make it like Alton Towers is we don't want people to see the rides, right? Like we want everything exactly. to be hidden. So I think you really, really did that well. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, as you're coming over the bridge, the first thing you see is that clock tower. It's sort of almost like a centerpiece. Mm, um, it works sure. as a centerpiece. And um, as you say, when we do start building the rides and things behind, uh, you won't see them. And so, um, yeah, I think it works really well. Um, if we go through the little archways, if we say on the right-hand side... Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see I have made a custom sign. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. A little waterfall. Avery Forest, yeah, with uh, the little waterfall behind it. Yeah, that, look, that looks beautiful, man. Um, I think I think that's our uh, that's our thumbnail picture right there. I mean, that's, that's that looks awesome. Really, really well done. Uh, yeah, I, I thought, obviously... Um, we already decided the name last week for Avery Forest, and I thought after I'd done um, the majority of this area, um, I had some time, so I thought I'm going to attempt a custom sign. Uh, so playing with the art shapes and 
um, ended up coming up with this. Um, and then it's, it's quite a funny story, actually, because at first I'd just done the Avery. I'd just, I'd just completed the Avery. And I was going to put it between the buildings in the archways. Mm -hmm. And I was going to put Avery one side. I was going to put Forest on the other. But when I put Avery on the one side, it just didn't look right. And I couldn't get it to fit properly. Right. Um, without one of the letters being a bit slanted or, you know, uh, I couldn't get it to look nice up there. And then I had this idea of putting it on the branch. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously making it look a bit, um, I wouldn't say scruffy, but a little bit uneven, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then obviously I'd done the forest and then this, this idea came to me about putting it on a, on a water fountain like that um and i, f I think it where i've put it in the park i think it does it suits i think yep for sure for sure and i'm just kind of zooming up a little bit and kind of showing a little bit of the train work you've done behind it um one thing i want to point out which i love is i love this little backstage area um you know i love my backstage areas and parks um, and really, really good job hiding it with the trees. You got the staff only sign. And another thing I love here is you've got this ele massive elevation, or not massive, but you got this elevation change. And then um, part of it that wasn't actually the path, you kind of painted with the um, terrain tool, which is good. But then I like how you continued the idea of kind of that, um, that, that wall that's a ledge onto this side as well, because that's really pretty how it's like, um, like maybe we should put like, you know how in the game they've got, um, they've got like food truck type stuff you could do. We could like add a food truck in this area and it'd be kind of like a little seating area or something for people to kind of look out. But I mean, that's really cool that you walk in and you can walk over to this ledge and I love the fencing you chose too. that kind of Victorian or not Victorian, but it's like the kind of fancy fencing and you got this little waterfall over here. looks really nice, man. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, one thing that's going to be very key with this park is the elevation and the terrain change. Obviously, with the limits that we've set ourselves uh, to not being able to build above the tree line, we are going to have to manipulate the terrain a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if, you know, the terrain going down here, I think it it will it works well because I'm sure in this space right underneath. Um, where the where the path comes down to the left um i'm sure that there's going to be a ride of some sort there i'm not sure which one uh, but at some point i'm sure there will be a ride of some sort there um and obviously as we know it's not allowed to go above the tree line so i thought that would be a perfect sort of opportunity um for our first ride yeah for sure for sure and i think what's really cool about this too um, i'm going to take the hud off the screen or put the hud back on for a second yeah so we're only at 16 percent um, I say only, like we haven't even built a ride yet, but I mean, if you look at what we've done, um, I still need to work on this entrance, this main entrance area over here, um, kind of add some more to it on the sides, but we've got this parking lot, we've got the entrance, we got the second entrance, we got this bridge, um, and you know, using the exploit if we choose to do so, I don't feel like we'll have a ton of coasters in this park in terms of like, like we're not going to have a ton of that, right? <laughs> um, no, but, we, we probably won't have loads, but... Yeah, but I'm sure we'd have like four or so, so I mean, that would give us an extra percentage to use. Um, so, and one thing cool too is I'm zooming out now just to kind of show the overall thing. By creating this bridge and kind of separating it like we did, this is a massive map, but we've already kind of used up a good amount of it, which is kind of purposeful, right? Like we're trying to make it look like there's not all this leftover space that we just are absolutely not going to use, you know? Um, exactly, yeah. And so as you can see, I mean, where, where the entrance is at is not quite the halfway point because technically on the map you still have way over here, but it's given us a way to where we can have a more compact type park and it not look awkward with all this extra space not used. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I thought as well. Um, are you still zoomed out? Um, yeah, I started zooming back in, but I can zoom back out. Yeah. So if you just zoom into the river, just to the left of the entrance where it, it breaks off and goes into the park. Yeah, I noticed um, that. Really well done. I got. Uh, I sort of had an idea because 
Um, I used to watch all these different like nature programs and and sort of expedition programs, and I got the idea for this um, through watching some of those programs. And uh, I thought if you like go down here, it's just sort of like a dense forest. And, like mm-hmm. if you imagine like rowing a, a canoe or something down here, and you, all you can see is trees either side of you and, and river in front, and um, and then obviously the, where this sort of fountain came from. Um, I just thought of like obviously we needed to get the the terrain level down and the river sort of down um, and so I thought obviously with the way that the terrain tool works and this and the water you, you can't have it on two levels or, or sort of a slope if that makes sense yeah. um, and so to get the water to look as if it was going down to the bottom um, obviously I, I thought what's better than a, a small sort of waterfall Um or like uh, I think they call it white water uh, is it rapid water or rapids I don't know yeah but, river yeah, rapids yeah. that sort of river rapids that's it yeah so that sort of uh, filled so that little waterfall bit there and um, as you can see at the bottom of the waterfall there's there's obviously a little pond and then the river continues on mm-hmm. um, which I'm sure will continue on throughout the park or yeah, around really, the park really well done Yeah, Thank I was, you. yeah, I was, I was joking around with him this week that um, I'm having, I have to step my game up this next week. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is, yeah, it's funny we we spent two weeks on this. Well, I mean a little more than two weeks in terms of the amount of time, but we've each had a had a turn at this, and yet no rides have been built yet. <laughs> but I'm I'm sure that'll change this next week. Um, so my I'm sure that will. Yeah. So what I was planning on doing is I got some really good feedback from. Um, um, from some of you guys, so I'm gonna kind of finish out this main entrance area. Um, you know, add some buildings on the side. I'll probably Corey kind of do something similar to what you did in terms of you know just kind of having it um, angle that way. Um, and then mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna try to play around with some different fencing here because I'm looking now at the wooden fence around the car park. Um, and I'll probably do look at chain link fence or maybe just lower it and kind of see how that looks. Um, because you know somebody said you don't want it to feel like they're necessarily trapped in so it's like yeah I totally understand that um, and then I thought about building somebody mentioned you know building kind of like a covered walkway where you first initially enter the park um, and so that'd be kind of a cool thing to kind of look at doing um, definitely yeah. yeah so and then and then obviously um, I want to kind of look at look at doing a ride so we'll see how that goes um, yeah. Do you have any idea of uh, what kind of ride yet, or are you keeping that secret? Um, yeah, I got a couple of thoughts in my head. You know, I kind of, um, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that kind of came to my mind was, you know, at Silver Dollar City, which, you know, I was at a couple of weeks ago, um, they got all their coasters, like, it's amazing because they all have, um, I mean, they go, they go above the tree line, but for a lot of them, they might have like a 150 foot drop. But yet they're 120 feet off the ground when when they start to go on the drop, right? So it's all about the mm. elevation change. And so, you know, I thought about doing like a max spinning coaster, or you know, just kind of looking at some different things, um, or you know, potentially a launch coaster that has a looks like it doesn't have that big of a hill, but kind of goes down into a valley or something. Um, so we'll see. That's kind of my initial thought. Um, well, I'm very excited to see what you come up with. Yeah, um, for sure. Should we have a look at the park at night? Yeah, let's do that. Um, probably should have done that before now, but let's see. Yeah, so. All right, so I love these lights that you chose. Um, I mean, all the options you did were good, but I think this is the best The best one, just kind of, because they're kind of hidden in there, right, to where you don't really notice them during the daytime. So I think that's really hey, well Exactly, done. yeah. Yeah, so that's what I sort of thought. I mean, you see... Um, in a lot of places actually uh, have you ever seen those sort of um, fountains that are in the floor yeah um, I think we've got a couple of them at some of our seasides over here and uh, um, the, the lights are in the floor as well mm-hmm. and that's sort of where I got the idea to put the lights in the top of the pillars um, because then obviously it gives off the light that we, we want it to give off but it's not that noticeable 
um, there's not a big bulky light there, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's that's sort of why I went with um, with that one. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I did put some lighting on the bridge. Yeah, that looks. I think that looks really good because it's not it's not overly done to where like you can't necessarily tell um, during the daytime, but it looks really good at night because it's enough light. I mean, it's you know I think uh, who was it? Uh, um, Coaster Creations or Ted was saying one time that a lot of the parks in the UK kind of close before nighttime, right? <laughs> so yeah, a lot of you know it's it's not like the parks need to be that lit up. Um, you know, here in America we. Um, they stay open till about ten o'clock at night in the summertime, so you definitely have some some time at night riding rides. Um, but yeah, and so one thing I love too that you did is I wanted to run this by you. Um, I like how you chose the kind of lantern look for right above the bridge, and so I, or I'm not right above the bridge, above the um, those two kind of walkways you made. And so, what do you think yeah. about like carrying that style of lighting throughout the park because i like how we've got kind of the the main white lights on um on the bridge because the bridge doesn't necessarily look like rustic or um westerny in a sense right but then it's almost like all of a sudden then you get to the building that looks different and the, the lighting changes so it's kind of like a mood change you know what i'm saying yeah that yeah sense? no that's definitely definitely a great idea yeah cool cool i'm happy with that yeah, well, it looks great. Um, yeah, I'll, I need to look at the sign lit up at night. So let's look at your uh, your wonderful sign that you created. There you go. Yeah, it looks really good. And you didn't overdo it with the lights at all, which is awesome. Um, yeah, it looks yeah, I thought it just needed to be um, highlighted as such rather than illuminated. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, just obviously, it's the, as you walk through these archways, it's the first sort of thing you'll see on this side. Um, For sure. And yeah, it, I didn't really feel like it needed to be like too bright, but enough that it would be the first thing you notice as you walk through the arch. Yeah, for um, sure. And obviously, just to mention that the area, this sort of plaza area around here, isn't completely finished yet I, I do need to well, we do need to add a bit more clutter and, and some other things around here but um, oh, for sure yeah for the for the time being I'm, I'm quite happy with how this turned out oh yeah for sure now one thing too that I'm, I'm showing here on video right now that I just noticed is when you walk in through the left side and you go towards this kind of overhang or this kind of um, uh, ledge you can get a, a glimpse of right above the trees of one of the alpine mountains with snow and i'm like this looks that looks awesome at nighttime um it just does. like right over the trees so again that looks really cool um but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to daytime um and now i will say um that you know i am gonna be out of town for a couple of days this next week so i'm gonna try to get as much of this done as i can uh, before we leave and maybe we'll be able to meet up and uh film another session before because if not i don't know if i'd be able to have it filmed because i'm driving back on tuesday um and so since i'm six hours behind you i don't know if we'd be able to film it before the wednesday time slot but i'm gonna try as try as hard as i can to get to get it done though so just wanted to update okay. you guys on that awesome um right i mean that's pretty much everything for this episode i think Mm -hmm. um, do you have anything more you want to say before we close out the episode? No, just we really appreciate for everybody who's shown support. And make sure to, um, whoever's YouTube channel you're checking this out on, make sure and check out the other person's YouTube channel. Um, my YouTube channel is MNJ Games. And then we've also got Corey, yours is Web Gaming. Um, and the links are on the screen. And I'm also, and I believe we're both going to be putting the links in the description part of our video. And so we really appreciate all the support and everything and hope you guys enjoy this episode. Excellent. And uh, just to add on the end of that, um, uh, just to highlight what Michael said, really, we really appreciate all the support um, and especially all your comments and your suggestions and um, in helping us to improve. Um, For sure. Uh, we said from the beginning that we're, we're going to learn a lot from each other. Um, and it does really help when you put your suggestions in because you know we can learn a lot from other players of planko as well um so yeah thanks very much everyone 
Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. And see you next week.